Hey, welcome back to the shop. So, I've been building this table, and I've got a wooden top, and the base, but nothing to connect it. So we're gonna make some brackets that fit up under here. This is a uh, mortise and tenon joinery. I have uh, some pictures of that up on, Inst on Instagram that show the process in a little more detail. And there's tons of videos on YouTube and stuff. This is all mortise and tenon, half inch square bar. And this is, what is this, inch thick red oak. Let's see. Yeah, it's about an inch thick red oak. Um, so we're going to attach it to the table. And we're going to go over cold work. We're going to go over brackets, stock estimation, tons of fun stuff. So I'll see you over at the vise. Okay, so this is an example of what we're going to make. A little bracket. So this will screw into the wood and the bar will sit in there and if you can see the leaf is just a little lower than the bar so what that'll do is this will actually suck the bar up into the wood and then it'll just be held there by friction I've tested this before and it's it's plenty suitable just on this little short piece of bar so I'm going to make four of these total it's probably just my demo piece figure out how the process works alright so now I'm going to show you kind of how I came up with the starting length um, so basically my requirements are I need to fit a half inch bar and I want to have half inch flanges on either side. So I'm going to have a basic shape kind of like, I don't know if you can see that, this, right? The flanges and the dish for the bar. And I know that I want to be able to fit a half inch bar in here and have half inch flanges, but the material has a thickness. And if you've done any amount of bending before, you know that you know, bending metal, you're going to kind of not hit your dimensions perfectly every time. Unless you, you know, do a couple test pieces. That's why I did test piece before. So I know this is about uh, 10 gauge, so it's 100 thou thick. So I'm just going to call it an eighth of an inch. I'm not going to worry about that extra 20 thou. It doesn't really uh, matter for this. So I'm going to draw in a thickness here. Like that. So now our material has thickness. And the length of the neutral axis of the metal is unchanged when you make a bend. And what that means is when you have a piece of metal, say like this, you know, you have the outer edge and the inner edge, and you have this center. So when you make a bend, like so, the length of the outside of the metal, the outside of the bend, this metal has to stretch, and this metal in here has to compress. Right? That makes sense, right? But if those two boundary conditions are true, that means somewhere in the middle of the material, there has to be no stress at all, theoretically. Right? It, you know, our bends aren't perfect, but theoretically there's a place somewhere in the middle of the bar, mathematically in the center of the bar, where the length does not change when you bend it. So if we draw in the neutral axis here, we know that if our material is an eighth of an inch thick, the neutral axis lies a sixteenth down from the surface. So if this is an eighth, then we know the neutral axis is going to be a sixteenth in. So long story short, what you do when you lay this out, so say I want half inch here, I want half inch on this depth and these three faces, because I'm fitting a half inch square bar inside, and I want a half inch on this flange, what you have to do is measure the neutral axis. So if I was, for instance, if I was measuring along this line, or this line, I would be coming in from the edge, coming in from the edge, and it makes a turn here. It does not make a turn at the edge of the material. So what I do is measure this distance out until a sixteenth in from the edge of the material. So this would be a seven sixteenths, and this would be seven sixteenths. The same goes for this. So if I start measuring here, and I move down, and I, this is the edge of the material, but I keep going a little bit because I'm accounting for that compression of material and the stretching out here. So this would actually be, what is that, 9 sixteenths. So this ends up being a half inch, 9 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, and it actually cancels out. Because we have two outside bends and two inside bends, it cancels out. So for a theoretical length of half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, it's actually 5 halves, if you do the math out, just trust me on that, I've done this before, which is equal to 
and a half inches. What that means is that to get this out of this, I have to cut this two and a half inches long. Make sense? So I'm gonna go cut those and then we're gonna go over to the actual forging process. This is a cold forging process. You can do this hot for a thicker material, but since this is only a hundred thou, eighth of an inch thick, I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna do it cold. Okay, I have a three quarter inch spacer in the vise. Here's my blank, two and a half inches long. I have a half inch square bar. It's gonna be my mandrel. I'll just line that up like this. And I chose three quarters because eighth inch plus eighth inch is a quarter plus half inch is three quarter. So I will just about clear the vice jaws going through with this. I make sure to mess up your mark as you're setting up. It's very important. Yep. Okay. Great. So now it's wedged in there. Hope you can see that. I'll set you up in another direction for the next one. Go to squeeze. We're gonna back it off. And then you can see how tight that is. There's not much room left in there. So what we'll do is we'll come back and see how these are even. You want to make sure these these two are even. They're slightly off, but it's not a huge deal for this application. So I'm gonna squeeze. So now you can see this is sideways. This is clamped sideways with this overhanging. And again, I'll take this from a different angle in, for the second one, as you can see. And then the back of this space is actually butting up against this. We have all that friction resisting my hammer blows up here. So I'm take a light hammer, just a little ball peen, and I'm going to hammer this, and you'll see what happens. You can see it's getting a little flatter. Maybe you can see that toward the bottom. So I'm going to do that a couple of times and just develop that until it's flat and I'll come right back. It looks about even. You can see how that sucks it down. You can do this hot too. But this is such a thin material that doesn't matter too much. Okay, so we got four of these. I'm gonna fit over the mandrel with it's probably the worst one actually. Minimal gap. Nice straight square. Yeah, pretty good. Not twisted. That's great. So we're gonna go back over to the vise. I just brought you over here to show you. Uh, and we're going to see it in the vise with the vise jaws kind of pinching here. And then all we'll do is take a punch and round that edge over. And that's it. That's pretty much it. That'll help the bar be a little proud. The reason you want that is that when you're screwed in, they suck the bar up into the wood. I need to do one with the punch, the other ones come around to this side. Flatten out. There you go. That's a bracket. Now let's see if I was telling the truth. Yeah. About a half inch, and it fits that half inch square bar. So, I think that'll work pretty well. So, there we go. We're gonna punch these and then put them into service. Okay, so we're over at the stage block. There's my anvil block down there. This kind of stump thing. So, I have a log set up here, and there's a bracket. You can see I burn this a lot, making spoons and stuff, but I have a punch here. And this is out of something like, yoo-hoo, this is out of like S2 tool steel or something. 
uh, it was an old Allen key, I think. What I did, it's just a round punch, but it has a parrot's mouth kind of ground into it. This is hardened and tempered. I treated it like it was S2 tool steel, which is good for this. Uh, I think S7 might be better because it gets harder, uh, but S2 is easier to get. That's what Allen keys are made out of, and it's shock resistant, which is nice for a punch. Um, I forget what diameter this is, but I just ground it. And what this will do, these two cutting lips will actually reduce the tonnage that it takes to push this through the metal because, you know, for the same amount of force, I'm swinging this hammer with this, this arm, I guess like a three and a half pound hammer, um, the surface area at which this contacts the steel is, is smaller than if it were just a flat faced punch. So the pressure at these tips is higher, so it allows the shearing of the metal to start more easily, and then as you move through, you know, depending on the material that you're cutting, I, I usually cut like eighth inch or thinner with this, you're already through by the time you exit or get to the bottom of the cut, you're already through on the tips. So it just, it makes the punch easier. That's my point. If you want cold punches, you can punch steel up to an inch, inch thick. The small punch is like quarter inch diameter, like this, I'll show you. So I have this center punched on one side. And I just set it up on a soft surface. Come over here and indicate my punch. Give it a tap. You can see. You see those little marks? Maybe you can't. There's two little marks right there, right on either side of the center punch mark, and those are where the lips of the parrot's mouth are hitting. And it punches a relatively clean hole. Hear that sound difference? It's me punching into the steel. So you just set it down. And... Sorry, that was punching into the wood actually. And it won't, you know, the wood won't hurt it. And you get a little bit of suck. If you had a, a die, that'd be okay. But this is hard, so I wouldn't want to jam this into a hardened die by accident. So I just go over the anvil and flatten it out. And I'm all set. There you go. Cold punched pre-counter sunk holes. And you tap from the back side, it corrects that diameter because it kind of mushrooms that metal back in. But where the taper was is countersunk. Yay! So seven more to go and then these are ready to install. So I think I'm going to call it here. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.